my name is Roseanne Wellens. I live at 613 9th Avenue. Uh, I have three things on my mind tonight. I'll start with the crosswalk on 9th Avenue at 47th. My apologies to Mark. He did call me a while back and I never got back to you about you wanted to get some feedback on how the crosswalk was going. My feeling is I concur with my neighbors here. It's it's the speed limit works pretty well, I have to say, as far as, you know, 30 miles has brought it, you know, some of the safety issues into check, so that's been good. But as far as the uh, enforcement aspects of it, I know that you're saying it's not doable, we don't have enough staff, et cetera, et cetera, but even if you could just do it once in a while, just to, you know, just to humor us, <laughs> you know, we would love that to know that there is a presence and people are learning that you have to obey the laws, this is the law, this is what you need to do, and it would have been great over the summer especially, now we're into fall and winter, that crosswalk won't be used as often, I'm sure, based on the fact that people won't be going to the parks. Let me so, just clarify, I didn't mean to say that we don't enforce and we're never there because we don't have the staff. <laughs> we don't have the staff and the ability to be there 24 seven. is what I meant to say. Okay. Uh, that crosswalk, the entire corridor, is part of our enforcement plan, and, and we do have our police officers out there. They're simply not out there all the time. And, okay. And because uh, it seems to me that, and I, you know, my memory is not always the best, but it seems to me there was some commitment from the police department regarding that sting operation issue, and that goes back to the meeting we had. You know, when this room was packed with people. So maybe I'm crazy, maybe I made that up, I don't know, but that's what I recall. So if we can get something like that going from time to time, especially spring to summer into fall. You're that right. Would be great. You're right. I know it was it was addressed and, and someone else did bring up the issue of the fact that the city of Chicago has done that. So I do recall it being raised at the meeting. Um, and, and I'll simply turn to the chief and say, it, and I don't even need to say this, I know he will do everything possible to make sure that uh, that intersection is as well as, as, as all of our um, uh, areas in the village are. Uh, okay. And so that's the best of our ability. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, we'd appreciate that. Um, I want to agree with the, the neighbor who is concerned about their uh, students, their children crossing uh, the Grange Road. So anything we can do to improve those crosswalks. I personally had a near miss with an elderly woman, which was a very scary situation. I was not on a cell phone. I had nothing, you know, I wasn't texting. I was, I was just going along. In fact, I was going at about 30 miles an hour and she was, you know, at a very slow pace trying to cross the, the road. And I stopped probably a half block before that crosswalk. But I was just like, you know, one second, and I could have hit her because it would have been a matter of like just turning my head for a second, and that would have been that. But anyway, so anything we can do to improve that crosswalk would be huge. My student, my my daughter does not go to the um, any of the public schools, but for my concern for my neighbor's safety, absolutely, whatever we can do. And I, you know, I'm glad to hear that we have a letter and a petition going to IDOT with the 30 miles an hour. That's good, good news. Um, Corey last. I, I was sitting at home at my desk and almost had a heart attack when that happened. I, I'm not even joking. My, I jumped out of my chair like, what the is going on? And I was really perturbed. My neighbor sitting over here was utterly annoyed, frustrated, almost spitting blood over the issue because we thought to ourselves, this cannot be happening. And the fact of the matter is that all these people felt that it wasn't just us makes me feel like where are we, how do we follow up with accountability to the quarry? This is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. I can't, you know, be dealing with that kind of thing thinking like, oh my God, what is going to be happening to my house? That's it, put the for sale sign up. Let's get out of here. And I don't want to do that. I have to love my neighborhood, I have to love my neighbors and everything else in my, you know, village. So, what's the accountability? Where, where do we go from here? I mean, I know they're doing a little study and all that, and, you know, we, we go to insurance and say we had this damage, but 
as far as we're concerned, we need to know that there's some accountability from the village and some answers that are, you know, really directed at, you know, this can't happen again, or if it's going to happen, give us warning or something, so I can set my, you know, clock to it or something, because it was, it was a scary situation, quite honestly. Uh, we echo your concern. Uh, we certainly don't want a situation where they can just give us notice and have it happen again, because that's not a great idea. I think the very strong message um, that I have heard our village manager deliver on our behalf to the quarry is exactly what you said. This can't happen again. Okay. We need to know exactly what happened, and we need to know that it will not happen again. That's exactly what has been conveyed, um, and we will continue to stay on it and report back to the uh, village residents as and when we, we have information, and, and I know that we will continue for about getting that information. Okay, so as long as I'm on that email list, and if I you are on that email list, yes, great. So, so I'd love to get something. You just gave me the opportunity to invite all of you who may not be on our email blast list to go to the village's new website, which is which is pretty darn good. Um, www.villageofgrange.com, and there's a little icon that you can click that says sign up, and if you sign up and provide your email address. You can then, you will get automatically an email blast from the village of any significant um, newsworthy items, and they're sent out um, fairly often. Um, and in the quarry blast and information regarding that um, is, for instance, uh, one of the announcements that would be on the blast information with respect to the public meeting and um, some of the work that we have been doing with respect to investigating the flooding issue. Updates of that nature will all be on those email blasts. So if you're not signed up, please join us so that you can get information on, on a current basis. Okay, which brings me to another point before I get to my third point, actually. <laughs> um, regarding this meeting, it just so happened that a neighbor emailed me information about this meeting, and I did not get any, any information from your email blast, if you will, about this meeting and I think that's why we don't have a lot of seats that are filled here tonight because I believe that if that notice had gone out to the residents, this room would have been, at least all the seats would have been filled. I can't speak to the whole room being filled, but at least these seats well, would have notice, been more filled. the notice went out that that meeting is going to be on the 18th of October. Now that went out as in... For this particular venue? Tonight's meeting. Oh, for tonight's meeting? Yes, right. Tonight's meeting would have been on the typical, in fact, there was an announcement that, that our typical meeting schedule and location would be different tonight. Okay. Um, this town meeting was was announced in the ordinary course under under meetings. And there was, yeah, it was just a blast last week that said, you know, for all of you who go to our regular meetings, this one's a little different. It's a town meeting. It's at 7th, 7th Avenue School. Okay, I haven't been getting a lot of village emails, so I'll have to check and make sure that I'm still getting. That's on the sewer. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. The other, the other thing, um, this meeting was announced in our village spokesman. Okay. Um, so it comes out, but we all get too much mail, and you know the other problem is there's a Bears game tonight, and it's just yeah. possible that some people, <laughs> you know, yeah, my husband might win three and up. He's like, yeah, it's not gonna happen. There won't be a lot of people there. Okay, my third point. The whole flooding and sewer issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so we I, again, I live at 639, so we're dealing with the 9th Avenue and the 10th Avenues and all that. We're in a low section, obviously. You can watch the topography and see how it goes up as you go west, etc. But um, my big thing is, I've got a, I've got a sump pump that works great. We didn't have actual water in our basement except through the uh, uh, what do you call it, laundry tub. And we have a valve, we can shut that off. Lucky us. But we would have had more if we only, if we didn't have a sump pump, for sure. We had seeds.